Welcome to Egg Money Quilts. I'm Eleanor Burns. Scrapbooking is currently popular, but nothing can compare to this scrapbook of patterns collected in the 1930s. It's a collection of ads, stories, and photographs clipped from the newspapers. Well, companies from the past are represented here. There's Laura Wheeler and Alice Brooks from Old Chelsea Station. Capper's Weekly from Topeka, Kansas. There's patterns and stories from the Nancy Page Club by Florence Laganke. The work of Aunt Jane and Nancy Cabot is in this scrapbook. Well, you could purchase all these patterns from the newspaper's needle arts department in prices ranging from 10 cents to 12 cents. Well, I really stopped and looked when I came to this one. It says, you can piece a quilt in a day when you know this sewing secret. And that's 1930. And I thought I was unique 40 years later. Well, do you want to know the secret? It's by using size 80 thread and stitching by machine. You can piece a dozen blocks in the time it took grandmother to make one. Well, we knew that. But what a treasury of quilt history. This scrapbook was put together by Mabel Gay McCusick, and she passed it on to her daughter, Ann McCusick Lohman, who taught quilting in the 60s and 70s in Minnesota. And here is Ann's high school picture. She must have had a lot of fun. Well, she had a treasure chest of patterns to select from. This scrapbook's amazing. Well, all 12 patterns in this sampler one are shown in this scrapbook. Well, these 12 inch blocks are framed with a reproduction print and then they're set together with lattice and cornerstones so the top fits a queen size bed. The blocks lay on the mattress and that beautiful scallop border hangs over the sides. My cousin Carol Slepik did the quilting. It's just beautiful. It's time to finish this quilt. Today, we're going to sew together sampler one. Join me. I needed a larger design wall, so I moved to the living room. Well, at least it gets me out of the kitchen. Now, a design wall is perfect for just placing all of your blocks on it. Then you can step back, look at a distance, and make sure you like the layout. Now, this design wall is covered with headliner fabric. It has fabric on one side and foam on the other, so that when you place your blocks, the blocks just stick. Now underneath this design wall is foam core. And this is what it looks like. It's very porous and you can glue the headliner on top. And then whenever you want, you can actually stick pins right through this and hang quilts on it. It's just great. Well, just let me get rid of that. The first thing you want to do is check out all of your blocks. The ideal measurement is 12 and a half inches, but you want to find a consistent size. Just take your 12 and a half inch square up ruler and measure each block. Now when you have a piece block, you want to check for your quarter inch seam on the outside edge. You might need to take out a few uh, stitches and move a seam or just press it different. Now on this one, on the peony, look at this. There is about a sixteenth of an inch that you could just straighten off. So check each one of your piece blocks. Make sure they're a consistent size. There are three of the blocks that were put on larger background squares. The grandmother's flower garden, the Dresden plate, and down here, the double axe head. Well, they were put on 13 inch background squares. Make sure you square up each one of these blocks. 
check through all your blocks. The next thing is to position them. Well, this is a lap robe for sampler one. It's three blocks across and four blocks down. Ooh, we worked on laying them out. Notice that there's a lot of triangles in this quilt in just the yellow. Here's Road to California, a lot of yellow, turkey tracks to yellow, and then down here to Garden Walk. It helps if you think of that triangle when you're positioning your blocks. Now, you don't want to have your scrappy blocks all in a row. Multiple color blocks in this one, we just made a diagonal line. Just step back and look. Make sure that the circle blocks aren't all beside each other. Arrange them exactly as you want them. Then cut your lattice. These are two and a half inch strips, the length of your block, 12 and a quarter, 12 and a half. These are two and a half inch squares around the whole outside, down through the middle. Get your lattice and cornerstones in place. Then the next thing you want to do is sew vertical rows. I always go top to bottom. Take the second vertical row and flip it over to the left to the first vertical row. You want to go straight down along. Get them all in order. And once you've taken all of the second vertical row and flipped it right sides together, then stack from the top to the bottom, keeping the top block on the top. Oh, this is good. Now, I like to do this because I can't stand running back and forth to my sewing machine and picking up blocks. I'm just going to go this far. You know how I am. Got to get stuff done quick. Well, you're just going to pick up the first, and it's the cornerstone and the lattice. It's still a quarter of an inch seam. On these quilts, I actually like to backstitch on the beginning of the row and on the end of the row. In between, I don't backstitch because we're not going to clip them apart. We're going to chain them together. Once the first set is through, go to the next set. They're already in pairs, right sides together. I like to anchor the block at the top, and then once I anchor it, go right to the opposite end, match it up, and if you need to, if your block is a little bit smaller, give it a tug, give it a pull so that you can uh, fit them together. You know if they're even off a quarter of an inch, it'll be fine. You'll be able to stretch them to me. Now you keep on going down through your first vertical row. Let me just put this one right on behind. I just love to sew them together. Finally, it's like, whoa, I'm getting it done. But I'll just stop right here and pretend that I went clear down to the bottom. Then you go back up to the top. Do not clip these threads. You keep them all joined together like this and it's going the whole way down. Then go back to the third vertical row and you just stack straight down in order. Oh, keep the top at the top and you kind of get back to your sewing machine. I like to lay them right on the inside of my sewing machine so that I can just pick up this piece and flip it right sides together. Well, you go down all of the vertical rows, one row after the other. You don't clip it apart. And I just call that hanging it together by its vertical rows. Once you get to that stage, lay it back out, check, make sure everything is in position exactly as you planned. And then once you have that all done, let me just grab hold of this. Keep on going right along there. Go down, 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 down. Oh my gosh, I'm nearly at the end of the block. They'll all be chained together. The last step is to go across the other way. So what I do is just take them and flip them right sides together and always look at the lattice. Here's the lattice right here and push the top seam towards the lattice here and then underneath also push the seam towards the lattice. That way everything is going to lock in place throughout your quilt. Well, I'm going to get this all sewn together and then I'll show you how to make a colorful rainbow border. The rainbow border is just a perfect four and a half inch scrappy border to finish off a quilt when you've used up all of your large pieces of fabric in the blocks and you can't find a suitable substitute 
for a border. Has that happened to you? Well, you need to have 15 fat quarters for all of the blocks. So once you cut up all those 15 fat quarters and make all of your blocks, just take whatever is left and cut it into two and a half inch strips. You need to have 30 for a lap robe and 45 two and a half inch strips for a queen. Just take 15 at a time, sew it in sets of 15, and just line up the cut edge along the top and then keep that salvage down at the bottom. And then once you have them sewn in a row of 15, press your seams to one side. Ooh, this is going fast. It's lots of fun. Just take your piece, pretty wide right now, it's barely going to fit on your cutting mat, but take it and fold it so that it's wrong sides together. Get it all lined up and then you can use your cutting mat to square it into five inch strips. Okay, I'm just going to start over on that left edge, square off all those salvages, take those salvages, get rid of them, and then you can actually get four five inch strips the whole way along. Just cut those pieces up. Now you might have a little bit extra, but you know what? Nobody ever complains when they have extra. You're just going to keep on cutting, but I'm just going to take these two and sew them together. You know, two of these strips is just right for the sides of your lap robe. So take your two pieces. Let's see, I don't want to put the same ones together. Just line them like this. Still that quarter inch seam and just sew right along there. Now, if you put the strip on there and it's a little bit too wide, you can always go back and take some deeper seams so they fit. Well, now I already have all of my seams going in one direction, so I'm just going to go ahead and continue with that one seam in the same direction. It's important to place your seams correctly on here. Think about how you're going to sew this. On this side, we want to sew down, so all of the seams are going down. On this side, I would be starting here and going up, so I'm going to place my piece so that the seams go up. That way, I'm not fighting one single thing. Oh, the design wall is perfect. Well, check it out. This is a good fit right now. So I'm going to sew the two sides on and then press the seams towards the quilt. And then it comes the top and the bottom. I have to remove a couple of these two and a half inch strips so it fits perfectly across the top. Add the corners. Press the corners towards the corner, sew them on, and my top is done. Chris Levine made this beautiful sampler one queen size quilt for her daughter. Well, I absolutely love her inspiration piece. This is a paisley with green in it. She used that paisley throughout, touches of that bright red and green. I love it. You know, Chris's daughter should beware. Someday this quilt may end up missing. Well, to make this quilt queen size, it has the framing around the blocks. The lattice are four inches wide and the cornerstones are four inches square. This is the perfect way of making blocks that don't start out to be quite the same size. Perfect and fit together. Well, if you notice in the friendship block, there are so many seams that when Chris was finished, the block was actually a little less than 12 and a half inches. So she framed it with a three inch wide border. Now, right beside it, this block, the double ax head was a perfect 12 and a half. So she just framed it with a two and a half inch border. There is a very slight difference between those two framing borders, but you know, she squared them both up to 16 and a half inches and they all fit together perfectly. It's just an illusion. You think you've done everything perfect, but you can fudge it. Well, to frame your blocks, take and cut for perfect 12 and a half inch squares, two and a half inch strips. And all you're going to do is just flip the strips right sides together on two sides, two 12 and a half inch. And then set the seam and press them open so that the seams are behind the border. The next step is to take a 
two and a half inch by 16 and a half. You're going to put those uh, border pieces on the top and the bottom. Just flip them right sides together, sew them, and press the seam out. Now, if you've used a three inch border, all you're going to do is just square that block to 16 and a half inches. Well, I have all of my blocks framed and they're all ready to lay out. Go ahead, lay them out. This time put four inch lattice and four inch cornerstones. You sew them together exactly the same way that I sewed my lap rope with vertical rows, top to bottom, and then going across the opposite way. Add a border, fit it on your bed. If you want to have a second border, add it. And then your quilt is ready for machine quilting. I finished sewing my lap robe top together and I am so excited. I am partying tonight. While Teresa helped me get this whole quilt layered, we have been busy. The first thing we did was take the backing fabric and we laid it right side down on a really large table. And then she got on one end, I got on the other. We smoothed and then we clamped the edges. And these are the kind of clamps that we use. They just roll right over and they keep that backing nice and tight. Next, we took the batting. This is 100% cotton batting. We layered that on top of the backing. And once again, we took those clamps and included the backing in it. It's going good. Well, the quilt top was next pressed beautifully. Teresa did it for me. And then we layered the quilt top right side up. Now she has this big old 60 inch yardstick. She loves to take it and just smooth all three layers together. So we had no puckers completely flat. Next we team pinned it. Oh, you should have a Teresa in your life. But the pinning is easy because we put pin covers on our one inch safety pins. Now this is a one inch safety pin and this is what the cover looks like. You take the safety pin like this and insert it into the cover, hold on tight, and then get a needle nose plier and just snap it like that. So it's ready to go. This is a pinning tool and all you do is just tip it down. You don't even need to hold on to it. Tip it down and take the tip of your pin, actually insert it, scratch the table, and then come up on top of the grooves in the pinning tool and then just close it down tight like that. And I use the pinning tool to remove them. Now when we were pinning, we were very careful to keep all of the safety pins out of the way of the walking foot. We did it in the lattice and in the inside of the blocks. The walking foot is next. We did some stitch in the ditch. Well, I want to show you Sue's quilt because it's just beautiful. She used all batiks and she did a ton of stitch in the ditch to anchor all of her blocks. She started with the vertical lattice and she stitched in the ditch right through that seam. She used background thread the same color as her background. And then once she went down all the vertical rows, she came back across the other way. Well, that was the first thing, even on the outside edge, to anchor all those blocks. And then with her walking foot, she did more quilting. Right here on the tips of the rosebud, she used yellow thread and went right around those tips in the ditch. Now you can do in the ditch, or if you want, Look at this, you can do a quarter of an inch away. This is the rocky road to Kansas with all those beautiful scraps. Blue background thread to match a quarter inch away. And then on the Dresden plate, another technique. This time she used the edge of her walking foot and quilted one fourth inch in on all of the batik fabric. Tons of quilting. It's just some straight lines on the peony, great looking leaves. On this one, oh my gosh, the turkey tracks, quarter inch quilting again. Finished off with some free motion quilting in the center. And look at the good old drunkard's path. She did such a unique arrangement, but she did quarter inch quilting in from the outside edge. Some free motion through the lattice, it's great. Well, I put my walking foot on already. Now it's pretty tricky because you have to make sure you get it on there just so, so that it walks over your fabric when you're working. Um, set your stitch length to 
3.0 or 3.5. You're going to find out which one is the best for you. I made a package out of my quilt because it gets really awkward throwing a big old quilt around like this. Now take your walking foot. This one lifts higher so that I can actually get it underneath my, uh, get my quilt underneath my foot. Okay, I'm just going to start drop my open toe walking foot right on this ditch. Use needle down, so I'm going to put the needle right in there. Now there's a locking stitch on this machine and that just means that you go up and down about six times. It'll lock so you can trim your threads right up to it. Now whenever you stitch in the ditch, you use a position of your hands like this. Your two hands spread apart. You want to really split, split open that seam. Just spread it apart. Move your hands each time you sew a couple of inches. Take a look and see. Now you'd be using a background color of thread. I'm using red just so you can see it. And you just zoom right down along there. Each time moving your quilt, kind of move out your package. It does take you some time but it's well worth it. Now, you can use stitch in the ditch um, with your walking foot, but you know, if you would like, so that you don't have to keep on turning your quilt around, you can even stitch in the ditch with your darning foot and then just drop your feed dogs and go around there. Well, all that's left after the stitch in the ditch is some free motion quilting and some binding. Oh, to finish is divine. Finishing this egg money quilt is no yoke. It is going great. I'm working on the binding now. These are three inch strips that have been pieced together so they go the whole way around the quilt. And then you just take that binding strip, press it in half, wrong sides together, roll it up and you're ready to go. Now I have my walking foot still on. I'm still using that same length stitch. It's a nice long 3.0 or like 10 stitches to the inch. I'm going to just leave a tail on the end so that whenever I come back around I can seam that together right there. Go ahead, use your needle down, same thing, and you just line up the edge of the binding with the edge of the quilt. Now you do have your backing fabric underneath. I always like to take and feel along there. Make sure that I'm not sewing my tablecloth in or I have my um, backing folded over. Now I took a pin and I put it in from the corner just the width of the foot. So now I'm just going to go right up to that pin and stop. And use my needle down, raise my foot, turn the quilt slightly, and just sew at an angle right off the edge of that quilt. It's like a 90 degree angle. And then raise your presser foot, raise your needle, swing around to the other side. Let me tell you, when you are quilting, you get your exercise. Okay, there's the angle going right off there. So take your binding, flip this straight up so you create that nice angle and then fold straight back down. Line up the fold with the edge of the quilt. It's just like really nice tucked right in there. You're going to see that perfect little mitered corner that you make and then you just continue on. When I stitch, I like to um, keep my binding just a little tight. I hold on to it and just let the um, whole quilt go along. I think that's good enough to just show you what I've been doing. So right here, you can see the corner. Got the backing and the batting out. You would just continue and do that on all four corners. Now, go ahead and trim about one eighth inch away from the whole quilt and the binding. Oh, be careful. Right now, you don't want to cut into that corner. But this is like the magic about to happen. Just take that and get rid of it. Okay, right here, you roll that corner, roll that over and then your miter pops out. Then from the wrong side, I actually like to do this by machine. So I pin it so that I can do it by machine on the front side. You take your binding and pull it over so that it covers that previous line of stitching. And as you go, stick the pin in right here, go out to that miter, 
put pins in the whole way around. Oh my gosh, when I'm done with my binding, I look like I've been through a briar patch. Right here, tuck in this corner and fold it in at an angle. Just you're creating that angle on the back side, just like you are from the front side. One more pin, I'm going to show you right here. And then when I stitch in the ditch, I stitch in the ditch right along here and hold that whole binding down. It's perfect. Now, remember your label. Get it all signed and dated and sew it on to the back. Well, I'm finishing my egg money quilt and it is exciting.